I want you to stick your finger on my pussy, Catherine said. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> yes, fuck me, fuck me harder, harder, she shouted. So I did. <laughs> oh God, I'm coming, she cried out, letting me know that I was free to finish if I wanted. So I did. <laughs> We'd only had sex a few times, but it didn't feel that way. Catherine was so vocal and so explicit that I didn't have to guess when she was ready to move forward and what she wanted next. Her comments were like sexy guideposts that made the right path easy to find. Her raunchy descriptions and demands were more aggressive than I was accustomed to, but they weren't disconcerting. They made things more relaxed. That was the real upside to Catherine's insistent vocal style. She was never puzzling or confusing in bed. And her words made her memorable too. Once Catherine said, I love it when you squeeze my nipples. And I remembered that for a long time afterwards, recalling it often. <laughs> I have almost no memory of how things felt or how they tasted or smelled. Even visual memories fade on me quickly and I can conjure images of faces and bodies only indistinctly. But words, words I remember and Catherine impressed herself on my memory with the words she said. So in bed having sex, Catherine narrated our experience while I paid attention. I took note of what she said, but during sex, I myself rarely uttered a word, as if I had nothing to say or no need to say anything. Maybe I was afraid I'd say the wrong thing or say it wrong and reveal my incompetence. When I first met Catherine, we went on a couple of dates. After those first two or three dates, she decided she wasn't interested in me and she told me so. <laughs> the next day at work, I was telling the story of what happened to my coworkers, Sean and Greg. She said, you aren't her type, huh? Greg said. Yeah, but that isn't the crazy part. I shook my head while remembering how Catherine put it. She said that she likes cool guys. <laughs> guys who are tall and go to the gym a lot. Dark, handsome guys. Men's men. <laughs> Did she imply these things or actually say them? Oh, she said them. <laughs> oh, Greg said. You're not her type because her type is men who are manly and attractive. Exactly, I said. <laughs> Greg laughed. That obviously leaves you out in the cold. <laughs> Apparently so, I said. And then I changed the subject. I didn't want to try to explain to Greg and Sean what else was said when Catherine broke it off. She had told me that even though I wasn't attractive enough to date, she still wanted to be friends. And I had shrugged and said okay. Even though she had insulted me quite directly, I didn't <laughs> object or complain. I figured past women had also found me unattractive, but they had been considerate, so they tried fake reasons for not dating me. <laughs> Somehow when Catherine came right out and said she found me unattractive, she didn't seem inconsiderate. She seemed uncontrived. That's how I saw Catherine, entirely unafraid to speak her truth, no matter how outrageous, undisguised, and uncontrived. It was after six months of being just friends that Catherine changed her mind. She blurted out that she wanted to fuck me after all, And just like that, we started dating again. <laughs> One night we were fooling around when Catherine suddenly stopped what she was doing and spoke up. Why don't you tell me what you want, she said. I almost winced. You know what I like, I said. <laughs> she pressed a little. You won't tell me? It's not that I won't tell you, I said. I just don't have anything in mind to say, you know? Just tell me what you want or how you want me to do it, she said. I sighed. She was trying to give me permission, but I only felt imposed upon. I wished I'd just given her a quick, mediocre answer. Now I couldn't get away with saying something lame because she was paying too much attention. <laughs> I took a breath to stall for time. It's hard to find the words. <laughs> Catherine laughed at this excuse. You always have something to say, she said. Yeah, that's true, just not tonight. I don't know why, but next time, I mean soon. I'll say more, you know? Maybe she felt the tension in my body, not the good kind. Or maybe she decided it wasn't worth dragging out of me, but she let it drop. So for a few months after that, I did make an effort to say more. I wanted to speak up before Catherine questioned me again and put me on the spot. I came up with a few stock phrases I could use, keeping it brief, commonplace, unobjectionable. <laughs> I want you to suck my cock, I said to her once. <laughs> I want to fuck you from behind, I said a different time. 
such trait, trite statements of desire and intent I mustered up. These attempts at dirty talk were mostly failures. The problem was my delivery, which was hesitant and uncertain. <laughs> there are things you're allowed to say half heartedly, like, let's watch TV. That's no big deal. But if you tell a woman, I want you to lick my shaft, you have to say it forcefully or with enthusiasm. If you say it indifferently, like it's a question, I want you to lick my shaft, that's confusing and ridiculous. Which is not to say I didn't want a blowjob from Catherine. I just didn't want one. I wasn't asking for what I wanted. I was just saying what I thought she wanted to hear. I treated it like a performance, practicing my lines in front of the bathroom mirror, like a smutty Travis Bickle. You want to suck my cock? You want to suck my cock? You want to suck my cock? Despite these efforts, my delivery remained halting and weak. And my struggle made me envy Catherine and her natural, uninhibited style. I wanted to be just like she was and cut loose unselfconsciously. But I only envied Catherine's natural style until I learned about Tracy. We were driving down to her parents' house when she told me the story. Do you know who Tracy Lords is, she asked. I had to think for a minute. You mean the porn star? Catherine nodded, and then she launched into the story. Tracy Lords was a popular porn star in the 80s, appearing in hundreds of movies. After making these hundreds of movies, she announced that she had begun her porn career at the age of 15 using a fake ID. Catherine's parents owned a video store when she was a kid. And like most suburban video store owners in the 80s, the store had a large adult section. On the day Tracy Lords announced she'd made movies as a 15-year-old, Catherine's parents, like pretty much every other video store owner in America, became child pornographers. <laughs> Stricken with alarm, they pulled all their Tracy Lords VHS tapes off the shelves, brought them home, and hid them in the basement. <laughs> That's where Catherine found them. <laughs> in high school, I used to watch those movies every day after school, Catherine explained. That's how I learned about sex. Uh, watching the pornos your mother hid in the basement? <laughs> yeah, watching Tracy Lords. She was amazing. As Catherine told me this story in detail of how she thought Tracy Lords was so awesome at sex, I realized that Catherine's favorite moves and lines had been lifted, really stolen, from Tracy Lords' work. <laughs> she explained how Tracy's dirty talk and orgasmic shrieking were very distinctive, and it became clear that Catherine was also describing how she herself reacted in bed. So the whole time I was trying to come up with an act that could compete with Catherine's natural way in bed, she wasn't being herself at all. Her words were just as contrived as mine, if not more so. I wondered if Catherine was even aware of me when she spoke up in bed, or if she was just reciting poor movie dialogue and picturing the movie she'd watched. I found this idea disappointing and a little deflating. After Catherine's Tracy Lloyd's revelation, our sex life continued in much the same way as before. She carried on like a cat in heat, saying all sorts of dirty, crazy things. And I did my thing, mostly silently. <laughs> but I didn't feel the same need to match her word for word. I decided we weren't in a competition to prove who could be the most sexual or the least self-conscious. We were both just trying to enact our idea of a good time in bed based on our understanding of sex, incomplete and uncertain as it was. One day at work, Greg was giving me a hard time because I refused to reject a loan application he wanted me to get rid of. The borrowers were marginal, but I wanted to see if they would sneak by. We were arguing back and forth as Greg got angrier until he got right up in my face and started to make it personal. You know what your problem is? You're a fucking pussy. <laughs> uh-huh, I said. <laughs> I didn't feel like brawling with Greg. I mean, you're dating a woman who told you you're not attractive. That's what she said to you. I nodded. Yeah, pretty much but you still want to be her boyfriend? What the fuck is wrong with you? Greg was accusing me of being in love with Catherine, like a complete schmuck. I knew that wasn't the truth, but I knew the truth wasn't any more acceptable. Greg wouldn't understand if I told him that I wasn't sure why Cath I was with Catherine, and I doubted if our relationship really made any sense, but it was no time to admit my ambivalence. Greg wanted an answer. He stood close, looking down on me. Seriously, why would you go out with her? 
Suddenly I realized what I should say and how I should say it. I looked Greg right in the eye and I lied. I'm with Catherine because she fucks like a porn star. <laughs>